All right, so also my effort prepping for the camper box is going to go on and putting down some thin padding between the subframe and the camper body. You just give it a little bit of cush for those uh, vibrations from the trail and the road. Let me show what I got going on here. Okay, so my prep for the camper box that's going to go on. I'm trying to get everything ready here on the camper body. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some, some rubbing alcohol, some paper towels, and I'm going to clean down this, uh, this entire subframe here and get it really nice and cleaned up uh, for application of these rubber strips that are going to go on the subframe here and uh, with adhesive backing to really cushion the, the camper body. These adhesive strips are, are, I think, perfect. They're really high density, but yet they got a little bit of cush. I forget what the exact specs are. I'd have to look them up, but uh, happy to share. Um, but they've got uh, the right amount of cush and yet they're they're outside rated UV uh, rated for UV and outdoor weather and everything else and so I think they're gonna work out really well and um, having the adhesive vacuum make it really clean easy to put these things down and that'll give that camp body a little bit of cushion raise it up about a, a quarter of an inch which helps it clear uh, things like these uh, subframe bolts which are pretty much just either flush or slightly proud of the the top of the subframe here Okay, now that I have it, uh, the, frame, the subframe rail is all cleaned up with some rubbing alcohol. They're nice and clean. I'm actually, I found a few little tiny scratches. They're all very superficial, but nonetheless, I'm just going to go ahead and gloss over it with some black spray paint that matches the subframe here. I'm just going to gloss over those tiny little superficial scratches in here just to make sure that there's no rust or anything that develops on this subframe. Really, my preference would be if I were building my own subframe, I had this finished and galvanized. Galvanized, there's never going to be a rust issue or should never be. It would hold up much better, I think, than a powder coat will. Powder coat's always eventually going to get scratched and UV degraded over time although that it is very durable and does take a long time for that but so it's a good finish but I've got some tiny little superficial like I said um, just marks in here that I'm just going to go ahead and get cleaned up or touched up with a little bit of, of paint and that way I've got no issues at all with rust in the future so make it nice and clean get it all done and then I'm going to uh, get ready to install these uh, rubber uh, pads on here. Ah, uh, these, uh, I knew that I'd rather use my own adhesive than what they applied, but because I'd be able to use a stronger adhesive, but sometimes when you peel these off, the adhesive comes with it, or it's really hard to grab these edges on this rubber mat, which one just fell, um, but nonetheless, it's coming off. Just a little bit of a pain at times, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm excited about these rubber pieces. I think they're going to work really great as a slight dampener for the camper box. Um, they're really nice high density, but yet have somewhat of a, of a nice soft profile give, but they're going to, they're going to definitely help a lot. And so I'm putting these on and I roll them out with the roller here uh, just to make sure I've got a good adhesive connection with all of them. And these rubber pads also it's hard to going to be see, see in this but they're they actually have a little slight cross hatch pattern I know it's gonna be really hard to see it's really hard to see with the naked eye it's a very light cross hatch pattern to provide some grip so this way the box doesn't slide around it, it really is sticky like right now I'm trying to push my fingers off of this with just a little bit of, of force on my fingers and it's got a lot of friction so these are going to work really well for exactly the intended purpose keep this box from sliding around so the subframe holes here the earth cruise bride I think they're an inch and a quarter in diameter uh, they may be a little more, but nonetheless, they're over an inch in diameter. And the bolts that Total Composite suggests using for your subframe mounts are three eighths of an inch. Because the frame that the, the in the floor of the Total Composite's floor is roughly the channel in there, the steel channel, the steel bar that these are going to be, the, that the holes going to be drilled, and these bolts will be tapped up into. Those are two inches wide, so I've got a lot of room to play with here. As long as all my dimensions are right on, which you know the dimensions I calculate out and checked and double checked and triple checked are down to about a thousandth they are down to a, a thousandth of an inch 
uh, rounded up to a thousandth of an inch. And so they're very tight. Those are dimensions I gave to Earth Cruiser to make this subframe on. They all seem to check out to match up with that. So I've got a little room to play with this bigger hole, which is that's a good thing. The, the bad thing is it means that the box can actually slide around really uh, with a 3 8 inch bolt and about an inch and 3 8 inch hole as much as really a half inch in any direction. And that's not good. And so what I'm going to do is two things. One, I'm going to go from a 3 8 inch bolt to a half inch bolt. It doesn't really give me any more strength. They're actually, the, the tensile strength is really the same, but it gives me a lot more shear strength. And that's really what I'm after. It's a bigger hole to drill and, and tap. So that's a downside. It's obviously a little bit bigger, heavier bolt, but it gives me a lot more shear strength. And it'll fill in that hole a little bit more. I've also got some cupped washers. I'll show you those in a little bit. But I have some cupped washers that, that will, those will go right into this hole from the bottom here. And then I'm also gonna make a plate that these are gonna go up into and out of aluminum. So it's gonna have one big washer and that washer with the hole in the center is essentially gonna prevent the camper body or that bolt from sliding or moving at all within this subframe mount, this box section. So that's how um, in com I'm keeping the, the box from being able to move under really like hard braking or an accident or some of that nature, but also help keep the bolts from shearing off because they'll have a lot more structural strength around their, their weakest point around the head um, that's, that's going to be sitting below the camper box. And also this rubber that I'm putting on right now is, is got this really nice grippy pattern. It's going to make putting the camper box on here a bit more, a bit harder because we're literally going to have to kind of lift it, get it in position and lift it and move it in position. We can't just really slide it around. That's going to be the downside. It's going to be a little bit more work on the insulation side. And that video will be forthcoming. So make sure you subscribe and do share with others so you, uh, you can catch that and they, others can catch it too. But anyways, it's going to work better in the, in the using. And so if it adds a couple hours on the insulation, that's a bummer. But if it benefits it a whole lot through the, insula uh, through the use over many years, that'll be good. Let me get, I'm going to get these rubber pads all installed up here. I'm trying. There again, I'm kind of peeling away the, uh, the adhesive when I peel away that paper corner because it's so hard to get just the paper corner here with my man hand nails. Uh, there we go. I got that one. So fortunate has four corners. So, so there's we go. Start with that one. <laughs>